Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mr. Buddy here, and in this video, I'm going to be going over all of the ideas and content I either cut out or changed in my What If Scandinavia Was a Pokemon Region video. Now, every time I do a What If Blank Was a Pokemon Region video, there's always a ton of stuff I end up removing or changing in the final product. It doesn't matter if I'm doing a video on Greece, the Western US, or even Australia, there's usually a lot of pages I end up taking out, and I always get a bunch of comments asking me to share all that stuff. Well today I thought I'd finally fulfill all those requests and make a video talking about all the things I took out of the Scandinavia regional video. You might think with the official video being over an hour long that there wasn't much I took out of it, but if you can believe it, there was about 7 pages of stuff I ended up removing from the finished video, and today I'm going to be going over and detailing all of that cut content. Now before we jump in, just a couple of brief notes. Number one, this removed content video is going to be talking about and referencing a lot of stuff from my official Scandinavia regional video. So if you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest going over and watching it before seeing this one. The second thing is that this video isn't going to be as highly edited or scripted as my official Scandinavia one is, so don't be surprised to hear me go off script and ramble, or for things to not be quite as animated or polished as in the other video. I'm also pretty sick right now too, so please forgive my voice because it's probably going to sound a lot worse as we go through the video. The third and final thing is that, as I mentioned in the official video, I really want to do more Nordic Pokemon regions that draw from a lot of the same inspiration I used for the Scandinavia region. And because of that, a lot of the removed ideas I'll be talking about today will probably end up being used in future regional videos down the line. I'll get into more specifics of how or where some of these elements might be used as we go on our cut content tour, but I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that a lot of the stuff you're about to see will probably end up being retooled for other regional videos I'll do in the future. Alright, that's all the quick intro notes I wanted to mention, so let's officially get this thing started and take a look at everything I cut out or changed in my What If Scandinavia Was a Pokemon Region video. Alright, for the cities and locations, I really didn't cut out or change too much from the final video. There were three locations I ended up taking out, but aside from those, every other place I did extensive research on for the Scandinavia region ended up making it into the finished video. So the first place I ended up taking out was an island that would have been located to the east of the Denmark-based landmass and would have been inspired by a relatively barren island known as Onholt, which has two villages and less than 200 permanent residents. The big thing about Onholt that caught my eye for the region is that its terrain is mostly desert-like and arid, and at the time I was looking at this island, I had yet to find an actual desert area for the Scandinavian region. I was thinking that this island could be the region's desert, and so for a lot of the early planning, this island was included in the region and was essentially a giant desert island you could surf to. Eventually, however, I learned about the Rabjurg Mile in the north of Denmark, and I decided that might be a better fit for what the region's desert could be based on. I was a little bit worried at the time that if I had an Onhold Island desert alongside the Gotland, Jan Mayen, and Vesteralen archipelago areas, that I might be including too many islands in the region, so in the end I decided to take out the Onhold Desert Island and go for the Rabjurg Mile Desert instead. The second area I ended up cutting out was going to be a sort of post-game dungeon area that would have been located underneath the Jotunheimen area where you receive your starter. Now this area wasn't strictly based on something within real life Scandinavia, but was rather a homage to a lot of the fantasy media out there that is inspired by Northern European folklore. Not to get too off topic here, but many Northern European countries' folklore, including Scandinavia's, is often the root for many fantasy based worlds and fiction, and I thought that, in kind of a meta way, it would be interesting to have a classic RPG dungeon in this region inspired by them. This area would have been very reminiscent of dungeons within things like Skyrim, Zelda, Dragon Age, Lord of the Rings, and other fantasy inspired worlds, and the overall gameplay of this dungeon would have been similar to the White Tree Hollow from Pokemon Black and White 2, where you would constantly be going through floor after floor battling trainers trying to reach the bottom and whatever might be down there. In the end, I cut this area out of the video because, while I liked the overall idea of it, I felt like it was just a little bit too similar to the base concept of the White Tree Hollow, or even like just a battle tower type area in general. I experimented with a few small twists to this dungeon area like having some floors with puzzles you need to solve or even boss Pokemon appearing sometimes, but in the end, I just never found an idea that I liked well enough and I decided to remove this location from the final area lineup. The final location I had planned to include in this regional video would have been an island based on Iceland that you would be able to go to in the post-game. 
Now there's quite a lot to go over with this Iceland based area because at least when I had planned it to be in the region it was going to be the homeland of Team Berserk. This would be the region that Team Berserk fled to after being kicked out of the Scandinavia based region 500 years ago and it would be the region that Team Berserk and Sigurd came from and left to during the present day of the story. Now the whole idea I had with this area was that after you become the champion of the Scandinavia region, you would be able to visit this Iceland island and meet up with Sigurd to take part in a small post-game sequence. This epilogue mission would have revolved around you and Sigurd trying to convince the residents of Team Berserk's homeland that dragon types are alright, and the core thing you would do is go around and defeat numerous Team Berserk elders across the region to earn their favor. In terms of scale, this post-game area would have been comparable to Sinnoh's battle zone, both in size and in how long it would take to do everything. This Iceland-inspired area wouldn't be huge, but there would have been enough space for a few routes and towns, and it would take you a couple hours to go through and do everything. Now why I ended up cutting this post-game Iceland area out of the region was because the more I expanded and fleshed out the story of Team Berserk in the final video, the more I felt like I wanted to devote an entire regional video to the continuation of Team Berserk's storyline, rather than just having it be a small post-game episode. Not only that, but I kinda started to feel like having Iceland just be a small additional area you go to after the Elite Four wasn't the best way to bring the country into the Pokemon world, and that it would be better suited if it was a full-blown region that I make a video on someday like Scandinavia. Now I don't want to 100% say for sure that the next Nordic Pokemon region I make will be based on Iceland, as the idea of this being Team Berserk's homeland is technically a cut idea and any number of other Nordic countries like the Faroe Islands or Greenland could be written to be their homeland, but if I'm being honest, Iceland is the country I'm leaning pretty heavily towards for the continuation of Team Berserk's story. So for the new Pokemon of the region, there were numerous ideas for regional variants, common Pokemon, and even legendaries I thought of that ended up being cut from the final video. In a perfect world, I would have loved to have all of these Pokemon included in the finished region, but alas, I just didn't have enough time to finalize all these ideas and commission people for the art. I guess if there's one silver lining to all of this, it's that a lot of these ideas will probably end up coming back in future Nordic regions I make. But for now, these are the cut Pokemon ideas from the Scandinavian region. First up, let's talk about the regional variants. Now initially, rather than just the Ralts line referencing the Huldra, I actually had variants of the Gothita line inspired by it as well. Kinda what I had planned out was for the concept of the Huldra to be split across both of these Pokemon lines. The Gothita line would have been pure fairy type in reference to the Huldra's nice facade, and the Ralts line would have been pure dark type to represent the darker nature that Huldra's hid. As I got further into the planning stages of the region, I realized that while it was cool to have regional variants for both of these Pokemon lines, the idea didn't work as well as I thought it would, and it was kind of weird to split up the Huldra's characteristics like this. When I reached that conclusion, I decided to get rid of the Gothita line variants and instead make the Scandinavian Ralts line representative of the Huldra entirely and give it both a fairy and dark typing. The other regional variants I took out were going to be variants of Murkrow and Honchkrow based on creatures known as Hugin and Munin. In Norse mythology, Hugin and Munin are two ravens that travel the world and report information to Odin, and I was thinking that the Murkrow line could get psychic flying type variants based on these creatures. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, this was 100% a case of having an idea that I wanted to explore more and flesh out, but ultimately not having enough time to see the idea to fruition. It would have been so perfect for Fjolnir in the final video to have two of these variants on his team, but ultimately I had to cut these ideas from the video due to time constraints. Moving on to the common Pokemon you would find all around the region, there was only one idea I thought of that never wound up making its way into the video. The Pokemon was going to be based on a Dale Carleon horse, or Dala horse, and have traits of a Fjord horse as well. A Dala horse is a traditionally carved and painted horse figure that in olden days was used as a toy for children, but in the present has become sort of a symbol for Sweden. The idea I had for this horse Pokemon is that it would be a pure normal or perhaps normal grass type Pokemon that would have different patterns and colors depending on where you find it in the region. The typing would remain consistent between the different patterns of this Pokemon, but the designs and colors on it would vary wildly between its different habitats. Switching over to the cut legendaries now, there were four initial ideas I thought of before settling on the Gulenbursti and Slipnir Pokemon found in the final video. The first two cut legendary ideas I want to talk about were Pokemon based on Jormungandr, the World Serpent, and Fenrir slash Fenris, a gigantic wolf that does some pretty major things during Norse mythology's apocalypse Ragnarok. 
Now I've been seeing a ton of comments from people saying that I missed a huge opportunity by not having a Fenrir or Jormungandr based legendary in the region, and I'm right there with you guys. These two creatures were my first ideas when it came to thinking of legendaries for the Scandinavian region, and I really did want them to be the main duo for the region and its story. The problem I kept having, however, was that Zygarde and his many forms are already based off of these two Norse mythology beings. Both Zygarde's 50% and 10% forms, even though they don't look super similar to a giant wolf or a serpent, are still meant to represent the idea of Jormungandr and Fenrir. When I do my what if regions, I generally try not to make any new Pokemon based on an idea or concept that Game Freak has already officially used. There have been a few exceptions, but seeing Zygarde and his forms referencing Jormungandr and Fenrir like this made me really conflicted on whether or not I should put two new legendaries based on these creatures into the region. In the end, while Jormungandr and Fenrir would have made fantastic legendaries, I started to think that maybe they would have felt too redundant with Zygarde in the region as well, and I decided to create two brand new legendaries instead based on Ghoulin Bursty and Sleipnir. I'll be honest though, looking back on all this and my reasoning behind it all, I think it probably would have been alright to have brand new Jormungandr and Fenrir based Pokemon in this region, alongside Zygarde. My ideas for both of these Pokemon would have been pretty different from Zygarde, both in design and typing, and in hindsight I kind of regret not going with these legendary ideas for the final video. The other two legendaries I thought of, which I had planned to be side legendaries alongside the main duo, were a pure grass type Pokemon based on Yggdrasil, the world tree in Norse mythology that would look much closer to like an Ent or a Landvator, and a mythical Pokemon based on Ratatoskr, the squirrel that lives on Yggdrasil that would be Electric Fairy. There was a lot of early concepts I had for these two Pokemon, and right from the moment I started forming ideas for this duo, I knew I wanted them to have some kind of connection to each other that would play out in the story. One such early idea I had was that the region's Pokemon League was actually built on top of the Drassel Legendary, and the only way to awaken it was to find the Ratatoskr Pokemon. Another idea I had was that you would go inside the Pokemon League and discover a ton of roots growing down into the ground, and when you follow them you would discover both of these legendaries deep within the mountain. Even though I came up with a lot of ideas for how these Pokemon could fit into the region narratively, I just didn't have enough time to finalize the concepts and I ended up removing them from later drafts of the script. Alright, to finish off this cut content tour, let's go over all the story and character related ideas I ended up taking out. I've narrowed down what story stuff I cut from the video into four things, and while not all of the ideas are as big or expansive as each other, they were all things I ended up removing from various versions of the script. Diving into it now, one of the first things I ended up cutting out was a small section of the video that described in more detail your first interaction with Bjorn, one of Team Berserk's admins. This would have happened at the castle at Lake Venern, and basically it was just a small part of the video where you would talk to Bjorn a little bit, get a sense for his devotion to Team Berserk, and then he would introduce the idea of Team Berserk looking for the weather controlling legendary. Why I ended up cutting this out of the video is because, and you're gonna hear me say this a lot throughout this section, I was really just trying to cut down on the length of the story in any way that I could, and I was looking for things that could be summarized or shortened significantly. Bjorn's introduction was one of the things I felt like I could shorten, and I was able to take it from about a page and a half in the draft, down to one paragraph in the final video. Next thing I cut from the story was a moment when you're battling Sigurd at the Abisko Town for the first time, where he would actually go into detail about his backstory and what happened regarding his partially destroyed face. Much like with all the Bjorn stuff, I felt like Sigurd's backstory was cool for sure, but it was also a couple pages long when I felt like it could be much shorter and be a little more mysterious. When I decided that I was someday going to do more Nordic Pokemon regions that explore more with Team Berserk, I felt like I could cut out all the specifics of Sigurd's backstory from this region and save it all for the eventual sequel video that will happen. Okay, the next cut idea is actually pretty big, and that is that originally, your rival wasn't just going to be the opposite player design, but would have instead been their own unique character based off of Loki, the Norse god of trickery and mischief. The general idea I had with this Loki rival is that he would have been a very different type of rival that we haven't really seen before, and the whole point of this character would be that you never truly know if it's a good or bad thing when he shows up in the story. There would be times throughout the game where he would seem very nice and helpful, but it would turn out he would just be using you to try to get something, be it a rare Pokemon or item, and the big culmination of this character is that about halfway through the story, he would find out he's actually a descendant of Team Berserk and would join the evil team. 
The big twist, however, is that you would have no idea if he's joined Team Berserk to help them control the Legendary, get his hands on the Legendary for himself, or perhaps help the player in stopping Team Berserk's plans. He would give hints throughout the narrative that he would do any of these three things, and unfortunately, I never wrote down what the conclusion of his story would have been. I feel like any of the three paths this story could have gone, be it helping Berserk, helping himself, or helping you, could have been cool endings for the region's narrative, but alas, his story started to get a little bit too complicated and really added a ton of dialogue, and I ended up cutting this rival out of the video and going with a relatively simpler rival for better or worse. The last story idea that didn't end up making it into the final video was a lot more background and lore regarding Kara, the Flying Type Elite 4 member, and a group both of them were part of based on Norse mythology's Valkyries. So early on, when I was thinking of ideas for characters to inhabit this region, I thought it would be cool to have a group of important trainers based on Valkyries, which are female figures in Norse mythology who are said to choose who lives and who dies on the battlefield. After I decided I wanted to have quite a few of these Valkyrie trainers in the story, I went pretty hardcore with the world building of the region and came up with this idea of a Valkyrie trainer guild that would be made up of seven incredibly powerful trainers. The whole idea I had with this special guild of Valkyrie trainers is that the members of it are trained from a young age to be phenomenal Pokemon trainers, and their whole goal is that they're supposed to be peacekeepers for all the Nordic Pokemon regions. This not only includes the Scandinavian region I've made, but also all future Nordic regions I'll make videos on as well. Now one of the important aspects about this group of Valkyrie trainers that somewhat ties back into the actual mythology of Valkyries is that they each have their own sense and view of what is right and what is wrong. They're all trained to be great trainers, but what each of them decides to pursue, and who or what they think is worth fighting for or against, is all up to the judgment of each individual Valkyrie trainer, much like how in mythology the Valkyries decided who lives and who dies. Now how this Valkyrie guild tied into the story of the Scandinavian region is that Kara, from Team Berserk, is one of the seven current Valkyries. And after her training was completed a few years ago, she went out into the world to try and help it for the better. The thing with Kara, however, is that she was actually born and grew up in Team Berserk's homeland before being trained by the Valkyries. And because of that, she feels like Team Berserk is her home, and she decided to use her newfound strength and power to help Team Berserk fulfill their century-spanning dragon-slaying goal and bring honor to her family. On the flip side of that, the Valkyrie scene in the Scandinavian region's Elite Four, which I haven't officially given a name to yet, believes that Fjolnir and the Elite Four of the region are doing the best things possible for its people, and she decided to use her strength to join them and help retain the current peace over the region. Other than this extensive backstory for Kara and the Elite Four Valkyrie, there was also a few scenes I took out involving both of them as well. The biggest removed scene involved both of them confronting each other at Team Berserk's fortress and trying to understand each other's point of view by having a duel. Now this was a lot of lore I had written for the region, and honestly that might be an understatement because there's like five more pages of even more intricate details about this Valkyrie guild and all the trainers and stuff in it. But getting back to the topic at hand, why I ended up removing the Valkyrie guild and all the backstories associated with it from the video was because, for as much as I love this idea of Valkyrie trainers going out into the Nordic Pokemon lands and trying to help, I didn't feel like it really fit into the Scandinavian region story. The main focus of the story I was trying to tell was about Sigurd confronting his destiny and deciding that he didn't have to go through with hunting dragons just because it was his family's legacy. I felt like jamming in a whole subplot with Kara confronting the Elite Four Valkyrie and both of them explaining and setting up this whole Valkyrie guild idea, while cool and honestly one of my favorite what-if ideas I've ever come up with, just didn't really fit in organically with the rest of the story and so I took all of it out. I will say, however, that I still consider all of this backstory and lore on the Valkyries and their guild to be canon for the Scandinavian region. None of this backstory really conflicts with anything within the narrative of the Scandinavian region, and moving forward with future regional videos that focus on Nordic countries, the Valkyrie guild and its trainers will slowly start to take a more significant role within future stories I hope to create. And that's basically everything I cut out of the Scandinavia regional video. Sorta. I guess I should clarify that there was a lot more ideas and thoughts that got thrown around in the early planning stages, like having all of the official dragon type trainers show up in the region somehow, or including a very small cameo of Team Buddy, but those were all ideas I thought about for a brief second during planning, but never decided to pursue or expand in any way. All the ideas I actually talked about in this video were things that were written into the script at one point or another, and before I took them out I thought worked pretty well with everything else I had written. Anyways, what do you guys think? Do you wish I'd included any of these things into the final Scandinavia region? 
Maybe you're glad I cut some of this stuff out and think that the final video is better without knowing every detail of a character's backstory. Let me know what you guys think of all this cut content in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.